You've seen the new callout feature that's integrated into Visio 2010, but before Visio 2010 there were lots of callout shapes that shipped with Visio and they still are available on the callout stencil and they're useful in their own right, even if they're not as automatic and slick as the new ones. So let's go find them. If you click on more shapes, way down at the bottom you'll see there it's the Visio Extra stencil group and you can find the callout stencil right there and just open it up. You'll see quite a set of different callouts. Some of them are not really the typical word balloon style of text with a leader line. Some of them are just 2D shapes like this brace here. You can see that the, the, the size of the brace automatically adjusts to the wrapping of the text so the lines grow. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. You can change the, the size of the the pointy parts and curved parts on the brace. So that's kind of a neat little shape just in its own right. But I really want to talk about the, the call-out style call-outs and how they work. So let's just pick something like this, the mid-box call-out, and I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see that we can change the size of the box by pulling on these funny little blue handles, not your standard handles that you see on most shapes as you type more text the bubble automatically grows this is typical Visio type stuff but this shape is actually a 1D shape this is the 1D begin and this is the 1D end and these are the height handles that have been sort of moved off the shape by the shape designer you can glue this callout to a target shape just as you do the, the normal ones and it does its best to sort of reposition. You can see the text is right aligned when the, the leader line is going to one side and the text is left aligned when the leader line is going to the other. But you'll notice that when I move the target shape, the callout doesn't move with it. That's because the callout is a 1D shape. You have to independently move the, the, the endpoint lines to get it to move. In fact, if you grab the box and move it, you actually disconnect it from its target because these are 1D shapes and they use a different and older technology than the newer callouts. You can see that this callout is glued to the circle kind of dynamically. It's got the big red handle. Similarly, you can connect to connection point. You can see there's little con blue connection points on the, the flowchart shape or right in the center of the network shape. That makes a nice looking callout except that the network shapes on, uh, behind the call line. So you just right click the network shape and click bring to front. The leader line goes behind it and it looks pretty good. So that's basically how you use legacy callout shapes. If you need to move everything together, you have to select both the callout and the target. Here I just held down the shift key and clicked, and then you can move them around. But what's nice is sometimes you just are quite happy with where the callout is and you can move the shape around and you don't have to worry about it moving. The newer callouts always move with the shape, which is what you usually want, but not always what you want, which leads us into the next demo. So what I've done here is I've dropped several callouts on the page and attached them to targets. And then what I did is I pulled a, a guide out from the ruler. You can get horizontal and vertical guides and things can glue to guides such as, let's just make a copy of a shape. I can copy a shape and I can glue it to a guide and it'll move with the guide. Guides are very handy, kind of an old throwback to the page maker days. That's where guides really originally showed up in computer, the computer world. And Visio incorporated them well as well, but not very many people use guides. Where they're useful with callouts is that 1D ends can glue not only to shapes but to guides like this. And so you can see that I've taken all these callouts and glued them to the guide. I can easily position them, but as long as I, those handles stay red, I know they're glued. Now I can reposition this column of callout text in one fell swoop just by moving the guide around. And as a special bonus, the guides do not print, so I don't have to worry about these messing up my document when I print it out and send it off to the, the boss for review. So that's a neat, kind of a neat thing that you can do with the legacy callouts that you can't really do with the new callouts. So even if we move this flowchart over, 
all the leader lines stay attached and I can reposition the columns freely. The last legacy call-up that I really like is almost better in all respects than the new ones. And I'm surprised that they didn't incorporate this feature in Visio 2010. You'll see custom callout 1, 2, and 3 at the bottom. And these are precursors to the new callout in that they have, you'll see, this connection, uh, this control handle here, the yellow control handle that lets you drag a leader line out. These aren't 1D shapes like I showed you in the last two pages. And you can attach those to a target. And when you do, something happens a dialog comes up that says, oh, do you want to show any of these shape data fields for this shape? So let's just cancel out for a second. Both of these shapes have lots of shape data fields, and I filled out some of them like manufacturer, CPU memory, etc., etc., etc. So let's deconnect, disconnect this and reconnect it again. And we'll pick, let's see here, see if we can find all these. There's so many on here. Memory, operating system, CPU, hard drive. And let's see if I can find the manufacturer as well. There it is. And I don't want them separated by commas because this is quite a long list of things that I'm going to show up. So I can take, click this drop down and say return. And I can say move callout with shape so that it behaves like the, the new callout shapes do. When I do that, you'll see, I'll zoom in a little bit, that we can see the manufacturer's Dell, the hard drive capacity, etc., etc., etc. All this data matches that of the shape. In fact, I can even change the value, and it updates not only in the shape data field on the left, but in the callout as well. If I move the shape, the callout moves around with it, just like the new callouts, and I can duplicate this callout. You'll see that when I duplicate it, it stays glued to that, uh, the laptop shape, but I can actually take this over to the, the PC and it will pick up the new values in the PC. They both have similar sets of shape data, but different values because they're obviously different pieces of equipment. So let's move them closer like this. Zoom in and you can see that sure enough, this one's made by Dell XXX and this one's made by IBM and has better capabilities than that. So this these callouts, again, custom callout one, two, and three, are really special sh Visio shapes and you should know about them. And again, they're located on the callout stencil. They're older than a new feature, but in some ways they're better than a new feature because they can link to the shape data very, very easily.